Have you ever wondered if you can turn any liquid or any type of paint of your choosing like this right here where you apply on the wall with a paintbrush and turn this into an aerosol spray can version? Well, there's a pretty cool way to do it. I'm going to show you in this video, so make sure you stay tuned. Hey there fans, welcome again to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, consider pressing the subscribe and notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. So we all know that there are paints and different types of liquids that are already in aerosol cans, but what if none of these fits our needs and we want to put our own paint, our own liquids, in our own specific aerosol can. Like for example, I wanna use this wall paint and use this as a spray version. Let's say I just wanna do some touch up like some baseboards or a spot on the wall. I don't wanna to have to pull out my whole paint kit just so I can start painting and just put this in a nice aerosol type can to do some touch up paint and make it fun instead of just using the regular old paintbrush or roller and generating all that mess. Well, there's a way to do it. Let me show you these products. And by the way, I'm not sponsored by any of these products. This first product I wanna show you, this is the high pressure refillable pressure sprayer. Now there are a lot of sizes. This is my first info. Let's see what's inside the box. It looks like a water bottle, but it is a high pressure sprayer. Notice how this kind of looks like a WD-40 type where you can go like this, you can go from the straw version or just the regular spray. This one looks a lot more sophisticated with the metal straw metal mini sprayer right here. And notice that here is the stem valve where you can go fill it up with air. You can put a tire inflator on with just the regular pump style, the manual style, or if you have an air compressor, you can use that as well. And I'll show you that in a bit later. You have a straw that feeds in. Just make sure that you follow the instruction manual. I wouldn't put any corrosives or whatnot. And you can buy these separately and mark them and label them for any type of liquid that you choose to. You notice that there's a little O-ring gasket right there. We'll try to do a little test for you and let's go fill it up. So depending on what you need, there's two versions. I'll put both links on the description down below. Check out those links if you're interested on this product. Notice how there's a little hole right there. That's where the relief valve is. And this is only rated for 100 and is set for only 140 PSI. Anything above there, it releases the gas and it keeps it nice and safe at 140. But for me, I like being extra safe and I like to only put 120 on this thing. Let's pressurize this with just air. So this is the tire inflator that I like to use. I used the same inflator on my other video when I recharged a WD-40 can. And if you're interested on that video, check out that video right here after you watch this video on how I recharged those cans just like this WD-40. But anyways, this tire inflator, I have leave the link on the description down below if you're interested on this. If this is also connected onto my pancake air compressor, and there's my air line as well. I like using this one because it has a little retaining clip so it doesn't slip out, and it is only maxed up to 120 PSI, which that's where I'm only gonna stop on this. I'm not gonna go 140 like what the manufacturer says. You can if you want to, there is a safety valve. Let's attach this, like so. Please wear safety glasses. I'm gonna charge this to 120 PSI. And you can hear it. I want you to hear it. 120, stop. There's air coming out. Just to demonstrate, here's a, see that? There's the air blowing. So, and if you take this out, it gets even stronger, see? You don't necessarily need an air compressor or a tire inflator like this with the air compressor. You can use just a regular bike pump. This one has a gauge as well and it goes to 120 PSI. Just to demonstrate for you, we're at 50 PSI already and you can keep pumping this as well. 80 PSI. I'm going to stop from there because it's getting harder. It's a lot faster if you use the regular bicycle pump where you put it between your, you step on and then you pump it like this. I'll stop at 80 PSI like this one. Okay. And notice how there's air now again. There you go. So if you're interested on this type or a similar one like this, I'll leave a link on the description down below as well. I also want to bring this up. If you like using air dusters, just air in a can, right? Like this. You can buy these for two for $15. This costs around $37 and it's refillable and you can keep using it over and over again. These ones, they run out and you got to toss them. You can actually just buy this and save you a lot more money on the long run 
rather than keep buying these air dusters over and over. So that's just something to think about. If you're planning to fill this up with liquids, make sure you drain out all the air out first because you don't want a sudden burst of air coming out of these things. Make sure you read the full safety manual before you operate this. Okay, friends, I can't stress that enough. Fill it up to around 70 to 80% full, and that should be enough. I wouldn't fill it up all the way full, okay, friends? So this canister is made out of aluminum. Screw the top back on, put it on. Again, safety glasses and tap. Okay, 120. There we go, and stop. Not with the hose tip but there you go notice how it produces a nice mist but this is a lot stronger a lot more directly and to show you how far this goes let's go outside and let me shoot it and show you how far this little stream goes 15 feet away from it and with the wind look how far that's going so that's pretty far friends that's pretty cool you want to watch a certain part of your car you have a little mini car wash right there Just gonna time how long before it loses air again there's no liquids in here it's all subjective whatever amount of liquids or what type of liquids however high or low you put them out it all depends on that this is just regular air just so you can see how long okay there you go there's still some air coming out but i'll just end it at 35 seconds first info tools is the one that makes this refillable aerosol can and it comes in two sizes you can definitely use this in the kitchen as well Make sure you keep these separate so you don't mix it up label it all right friends with that being said let me introduce you to the second aerosol type refillable can which is and it's called you can let me open it and show you the functions of this one it comes with the stem where you recharge it for but this is only comes as a spray version um, top nozzle now it says on the back that you can use it with fabric paint acrylic paint oil paint watercolor varnish alcohol ink primer adhesive cleaner water and any other liquids and when we open this up o-ring gasket and on the inside it comes with this one this looks like it's the charging stem you can pressurize this with a bike pump as well or a compressor we're not going to put any liquids just yet we're just going to test it out and to do that you just take off the top you see how it has that little insert right there you just put it right on top and it sits perfectly right there so from the warning label it says warning do not exceed 100 psi do not open while pressurized so keep that in mind okay and you can hear it charging there you go Charging, hold, 100, 100 PSI, Oop. and that is pretty, pretty nifty, there you go, and this is only halfway full, there we go, and notice how it filled up to 100 PSI really fast, All right, now we can put our nozzle back on. We're going to pretend that we filled it up with our canola oil, cooking oil, or if you choose, you want to put some house paint. Let's just say you're doing some spot painting on a wall, or you're trying to do some spot painting on your baseboard. Sprays a nice mist, like so. Like that. And it sprays a nice mist. Just like what we did here, we're gonna try to fill this up now with just the bicycle pump and lock it in place. Already get the picture. All right. Start, go. Air ended at about 35 seconds and it will last longer if there's liquid in there. I'm just showing you the test. So 35 seconds as well on this one. So for me, I would choose both because this one I could use for if I fix a 
part of my drywall that was messed up and I had to repaint it, I can just go spray it rather than using a roller, taking out a roller, all those paint brushes and a paint pan and using all that mess. I can just go straight here, mass off what I need and spray and go to town. Or if I need to replace a baseboard, chop off that baseboard, prep it and then just spray it like so. And if I have other uses like this, this actually best, it looks better in the kitchen if I was gonna use it for cooking oil or any other fluids that I need or for misting plants. My wife has a ton of plants that are around the house and this is great for spraying the leaves and for the little tiny more plants. So great uses for that. This one, good for automotive. Um, you can use it in the kitchen as well. It does look more industrial, so I don't know if it'll look good in the kitchen, so totally up to you. Again, many possibilities for these. So again, I'm not just saying this is the go-to, I'm just giving you friends some options and they're out there. So again, friends, I wanna know which one do you think is the best one? Which one would you use? And which one have you already used? Leave it in the description or the comment section down below and share with the community and which one you found the best. Okay, friends, if you found this video super helpful, friends, please hit that big thumbs up press the subscribe notification bell, and I'll see you friends on the next video. And happy spraying.